Hey everyone, I thought I'd uh, just uh, share some thoughts I was having today. Uh, you know, perspective is so important, uh, especially in these days. Um, I was, uh, you've heard the saying, you can't see the forest for the trees. <laughs> when you're in the middle of a, a forest, all you can see is the trees all around you. You can't get a perspective of where you are unless you get up higher and you can see that there is a way out. It's perspective. You know, I love, I do a lot of flying. I haven't done much in the last uh, three or four months, but I, I love to sit and look out the window. Sometimes I just stare out the window. You, you know, you're 35,000 feet up, and I, and I look at all these little plots of land, all, all these little, an acre here or a house here with a lot, and, and I'm, I think, you know, from up here, it seems so small and so simple and so insignificant. But I know that each one of those plots of land, each one of those little houses, uh, represents a family that worked really hard, prayed really hard to own that piece of land or to build that home. But it's just interesting. Uh, the Bible says God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. We serve such a big God, and and from 35,000 feet, I, I look down and I get a little bit of a perspective of maybe the way God sees things when we're going through difficult situations. All we can see is what's in front of our eyes, and, and if we just stare at that, it can bring fear and discouragement and even defeat. Uh, fear will paralyze you, but faith will mobilize you. And I want to talk about that today. Uh, in, um, in the children of Israel, I, I just want to read a little bit here uh, from, oh, let's, uh, let's, Numbers, let's see, Numbers uh, 13, chapter 13. They were uh, going into the land. Uh, uh, Moses sent spies uh, into the land to, to find out what it looked like. Uh, God promised that it would be flowing with milk and honey. And um, they, 12 of them went into the land and began to spy out the land. And here, I'll just read, uh, they did find fruit, huge fruit. Uh, this is Numbers 13. And they come back to give a report in verse 27. We went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. They brought some of the fruit back. They were there 40 days. Uh, nevertheless, the, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. These are the, the, these are the giants, okay? The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, the Hittites, the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and along the banks of the Jordan. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. We are well able to overcome it. But the men who had gone up with him said, we are not able to go against these people, for they are stronger than we. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land, which they had spied out, saying, the land through which we have gone uh, as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. You see uh, the perspective here? And all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. Then we saw the giants, the descendants of Anak, came from the giants, and, and this is what uh, did them in. They said, we were like grasshoppers in our own sight, and so we were in their sight. You see, they had already been defeated because their perspective. They didn't see how big God was. Somehow they forgot that God had brought them out of Egypt through the Red Sea, miracle after miracle after miracle. And now he says, and now go into this land. And they saw the giants. They lost their perspective. 
and uh, it it changed everything. Um, you know, I, I love Psalm seventy three. Uh, this uh, okay, so the psalmist is saying a psalm of Asaph. It, it's just why does the wicked man prosper? He, and he's going through all of these things, and verse. 16 of Psalm 73 says, when I thought how to understand this, it was too painful for me until I went into the sanctuary of God. Then I understood their end. Again, that's a a profound um, picture there because his perspective changed when he went into the presence of God. And that's a good reminder uh, for all of us. Uh, one more story uh, before I wrap up today. I love this story in 2 Kings chapter 6. Uh, Syria was invading uh, Israel and, uh, and Judah, and um, Elisha, the prophet, is involved. And everywhere that their enemies moved, they said, somehow, uh, it's like somebody is telling them where we are. And one of his advisors said, no, my master, O king, the prophet Elisha, who lives in Israel, keeps telling the king of Israel the things you say in your bedroom. (laughs) The king ordered, go out and find where he is so I can send some men to capture him. And the king was told he's in Dothan, so he sent horses and chariots there along with a good-sized army. They arrived during the night and surrounded the city. The prophet's attendant got up early in the morning. When he went outside, there was an army surrounding the city along with horses and chariots. And he said to Elisha, Oh no, my master, what will we do? And he replied, Don't be afraid. For our side outnumbers them. But you see, his servant couldn't see it. Then Elisha prayed, O Lord, open his eyes so he can see. The Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he saw that the hill was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Again, the perspective. And And just like this story, I pray for you today that the Lord would open your eyes in spite of what you see all around you, uh, maybe an army surrounding you, all the fear, all these things. I pray that the Lord would just open your eyes and let you see that there are more that are with you than that are against you. And the Bible says, if God is for us, who can be against us? So, Lord, thank you for your word today. Encourage my friends. Open their eyes. Let them see that greater are are you than whatever they're facing today. You're bigger than any problem. And we thank you that you're such a big God. And I ask you to perform miracles today as we, we move from fear into faith in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless. Make it a great day.